Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where it's What I Ate Wednesday Keto Edition. As always, fully plant-based and so delicious. Plus, I'll address the comments and DMs I got about the keto diet, like why the hey am I eating this way anyways? Your questions and to put it mildly, your concerns. But first, praise be the coffee ritual is back, but it is decaf. You'll know I've been kicking up the healthy habits and I've been able to become more flexible and just handle more in general. So when I saw this decaf ground on a really good sale at Linen Drugs, I just had to try it. If you're new around these parts, you might be wondering what's the big deal? Well, my sensitivity to caffeine had gotten so bad that even brewed decaf gave me the jitters and an awful painful jaw tension. I switched it instant only because it's very consistently super low in caffeine, but you know, obviously not as satisfying. Like compared to this. <sighs> Can you smell it? I wish you could. It's so fragrant with lovely caramel notes and the taste has this dark chocolate kind of bitter, but not too bitter. It's quite smooth actually. Please hit the thumbs up button if you also want smell vision to be a thing and uh, subscribe. Not because that's going to help us get the technology, but I heard it's good luck, so... <laughs> While I wait for this to be cool enough to drink, it is time for my morning hydration. Those who know already know it's AG1. Thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring the video today. The one little scoop has 75 different vitamins, minerals, superfoods sourced from whole foods, adaptogens, and dairy-free probiotics, which you know, I am a huge fan of. <laughs> it's all combined to support said gut health and support the immunity, recovery, focus, energy, aging. It's like just a all around really good supplement that you can actually incorporate easily every single day because frankly, it tastes good. Like, make it pleasurable and I can do it every day. Otherwise, I'm, a, I'm, I try, but I'm a no, really. <laughs> so if you want to start this healthy habit that can lead to more, check out my special link in the description down below or up in the cards. It might be on this side, it might be on that side. And you will get on your first purchase two free things. First, you're going to get a year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2. That is as we probably all already know by now, is very, very important for supporting the immune system. And you will also get five free travel packs, which, you know, coming up for the summer is pretty convenient. I will be bringing them with me. I am finally going to uh, visit my parents. It's been way too long. I'm going at the end of this month, beginning of next month, so I'm really, really excited about that. I guess I'm not expecting you to be excited about it. Maybe just be excited for the free things, okay? So while you're over there on their website checking it out, I will tell you my personal experience. I've already told you about how even just like a month on the AG1, I was feeling that my chronic tendonitis symptoms have been improved, like my baseline, especially in the morning first thing, because usually I do have like a baseline pain. It is a lot better uh, since I started taking AG1. So obviously there's some sort of nutritional gap that I was not being able to fill with my regular diet. Although ideally we do want to get our nutrients from food, but we don't live in an ideal world. So um, either way, I love to be covered with my AG1. It makes me feel better overall. I feel like my energy is up for the last three months. I'm able to, you know, do the work I want to do and care for the people and pets I want to care for and do the hobbies I've been doing. Maybe some of you have seen it on my second channel. I'm really late on updating all the progress, but things have been going really well. I'm very surprised and impressed with myself, to be honest. Because, like, I'm not a very sporty person. Any Uzis, in case you're wondering, it is nut free, egg free, dairy free, obviously, is vegan friendly, is keto friendly. It doesn't have any artificial colors or flavors, preservatives, you know, any of the bad stuff. It has all the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Uh, if you haven't tried it already, I do encourage you. You know where the link is. I've already told you, like, probably two times already, because I'm not really good at this. Um, again, thank you to AG1 for sponsoring. The video today and we will go on because I also know exactly what I want for breakfast. I have extra firm tofu already blotted dry and I'm gonna slice it in half. One goes in this container for later. The other half goes on a pan. Well first the pan over medium heat with a little oil which is optional in case you are one of my oil free friends. It's good for flavor and color but this pan is brand new nonstick, so not completely necessary. Add the tofu and I just want all sides to get a little olive oil. 
and then we can leave it alone to get golden. Usually for avocado toast, I just take my ripe fruit, cut it in half, and squish it out onto the toast. Today, since you're here, I thought I'd try my hand at avocado roses, but um, I've run into my first problem. Oh no. No worries, remember, we're flexible. I'm gonna make it work. No big deal. Now, make very thin slices for our rose petals. Mm, maybe thinner than this, really. That took so long, so let's check how our tofu is doing. Hmm, nicely golden. Flip and spatula it for good contact. And I think we can bump up the heat. And maybe some salt. Then move the sliced avocado over and I'm noticing the pieces are quite stuck together. So this time before slicing, I'm gonna add a little olive oil. Please be very careful if you do this because in my opinion, typically oil plus a sharp knife equals danger. So there's your warning. Still, it's gonna be better this time. Mm. You see? Fan out the slices. I'm needing a little oil here since the pieces are sticking so much. And now for the bravery test. My dudes, it is confirmed. These slices are too thick, but we shall persevere. Come on, that is not too bad for a first try, right? Now for attempt number two. This one with the thinner slices, it's much more flexible and much easier to work with. Finally, let's go back to our toasty tofu. It is all golden crispy. I actually cooked it a few minutes on the edges too, but I forgot to film, so that is why they are so beautiful looking. This becomes our toast for our avocado toast. On goes a little mayo, onion powder, garlic powder, freeze-dried dill, and one tightly wrapped avocado flour. Time to let it bloom. How cute. Now for its differently blessed sibling. <laughs> and for some color. What's avocado toast without sriracha? Less good, that's what it is. More onion powder because I just love this stuff. And my homemade furukake a Japanese seaweed seasoning, which is traditionally added to rice dishes and usually contains bonito flakes, which is a fermented fish product. Mine, of course, is a vegan alternative using nutritional yeast instead of bonito, with a little sweetener added to enhance the savoriness. Friends, I think I've outdone myself this time. Creamy avocado, perfectly seasoned with hearty, crispy tofu toast. Now, if you don't have the same goals as mine and you'll wanna slip in a little toasty toast under there, by all means, whatever you take from this video into your kitchen is yours and there are no rules. But why, pray tell, am I not slipping a little toasty toast myself, you might be asking? To make a very long story short, I figured out that dense carbohydrates can trigger my chronic tendonitis to flare right up. Flare-ups are the most annoying thing because it has been 84 years. Well, it's been seven years since I was first diagnosed with chronic tendonitis or tendonitis. It had been going on for a very long time actually before I even saw a doctor. So I may, I may have like done it to myself to a, to a, to a fair amount. But anyways, uh, it affects everything. It just sucks. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It affects how much I can work, when I can work, how I can work. Uh, it, it affects all the hobbies I can do. I no longer get to sew or crochet or knit or do any of like the handicrafts that I used to really love to do. Can't do those anymore. I mean, it actually even affects how much I can pet my cats, which, you know, do you not see their faces? They don't, do they not deserve all of the pets anyways? There are treatments and behaviors that I do to help keep 
everything at a minimum, the baseline inflammation as low as possible. I don't try to aggravate my symptoms. I do warm ups before work, you know, a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's very involved, <laughs> but flare ups still happen even when I seem to do everything right. We go from a pain base level of like three or four to like eight or nine, but yeah, it's pretty annoying. After some experimentation, I found out that if I put my body in a state of ketosis, and that just means the mode when your body is primarily burning fat for fuel, the flare up, the swelling, the pain, it can go drastically decrease very, very quickly, much more quickly than if I just rest and do my treatments. Like the treatments take away pain temporarily. The treatment is generally this like, ice bath for the arms and any affected areas. Usually I'm not dunking my whole body or anything like that. That's really just to get rid of temporary pain. It warms back up and it's still painful after that. I don't take any pain medication anymore because I've had a lot of bad side effects with those. There are more extreme methods of getting into ketosis. I am thinking of one that somebody mentioned. However, that is just uh, not necessarily risk-free and not exactly conducive to my lifestyle as a food content creator. And that's all I'm gonna say about that for now. <laughs> so generally I find that um, if I keep up my usual eating pattern, which is time-restricted eating, which is really following my body's natural cues to be honest, then I usually keep it keto for like about a week so I can get, maximize the benefits and um, Balance that with my desire to do whatever the heck I want all the time, as is tradition here on Mary's Test Kitchen. As you can probably tell by my content, I don't keep a consistently keto diet all the time. It's just, I, I use it kind of like a treatment on an as-needed basis. During those times, I've of course tried to take supplements to make sure that I'm getting everything that I need. But like I said before, like I'm terrible at that kind of thing. If it's not pleasant, I don't wanna do it. It's gonna be really hard for me to do every day. I'm gonna easily forget, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and you know where this is going. It is, like I've already done my ad read, so I don't have to say any more about the AG1, but it literally is the only supplement that I've been able to keep up and that I feel a difference from, like that's very rare. So like, that's why I work with them. They, they actually do what they claim. And what I claim, <laughs> segue, uh, what I claim is that for this next meal, for lunch that I have planned, I'm gonna get it going and, well, I gotta go back to work, do a little work, and then I'm gonna get into it. But it's gonna be this, I'll just put a screenshot or something, this glorious vegan buffalo chicken salad, so stay tuned. <laughs> I don't know what the head bob was about. I just, I'm not used to being on camera, guys, so, you know, I'm probably a little bit more sillier, more sillier. All right, I gotta get serious and go back to work. All right, I'll see you in a second. First step, let me introduce you to my recent love, soy curls. You might have seen me, I uh, impulsively bought a 12 pound box and it has been glorious. Don't mistake soy curls for TVP or other kinds of soy chunks. They are similar, but they are not the same. Soy curls are made with whole soybeans and for some reason they taste a heck a lot better than TVP, in my opinion. They've got the fiber still in them, every single goodness from the soybean. I just soak them in hot boiling water to rehydrate them quickly. And while we wait, might as well get the greens ready. There are more nutrient dense greens, yes guys, but um, I do what I want and I love romaine. This here is about three cups. Oh, here's a little food storage hack for you. Store your washed and mostly dried lettuce in a big Ziploc and then squeeze out any air before sealing it. It will stay fresh and crispy for ages. I'll do a very simple dressing today because my topping is gonna to be intense to say the least. Olive oil, lemon juice, plus onion powder. Make sure to get the super fine stuff if you can. Granulated onion powder just isn't as good. Garlic powder, salt and pepper. Now we'll pop this in the fridge while I get back to the soy curls. Drain them nicely and I'm going off camera to rinse them in cold water so they cool down and I can squeeze the heck out of them and get rid of as much water as possible. Look how chickeny they are. Tender with a good bite to them and ready to take on any seasonings. Starting with buffalo sauce. This is Frank's buffalo wing sauce, which happens to be vegan friendly already, although I prefer the flavor of using hot sauce and mixing with plain vegan butter myself, but this is very convenient. Then a fresh clove of garlic. A regular little clove will do, but I am not mad at this garlic for giants. More of my beloved very powdery onion powder, then salt. At this point, we interrupt the seasoning a moment to preheat the air fryer. 
by the way. You can certainly do this in the oven, it just takes a bit longer. I almost forgot a little nooch for that savory Lipton chicken noodle kind of flavor. By the way, since soy pearls are already fully cooked, you can taste and adjust the flavor right now. Just keep in mind the flavor will be more concentrated after air frying or baking. Now we can dump our saucy soy curls into the air fryer basket. Spread things out a bit. And this goes in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about mm, 8 to 10 minutes, however long you, you know, like or have patience for. No waiting around for me though, let's make some toppings. Chop some fresh green onions. And make a quick little cheese sauce. You can always do some aquafaba mozzarella from scratch or other kind of homemade cheese sauce, but this is just really, really easy and convenient for lunch. One more step because I decided I did want the buttery flavor of Miyoko's after all. And the soy curls are ready. Browned around the edges, mm, just wonderful. They aren't crispy though, despite how they look. They're more like meaty, chewy. And uh, you can just mix it up with the melting vegan butter and a little monk fruit and erythritol sweetener to balance the spice. After mixing, you can taste it. Then on to our fresh and crispy lettuce, melted cheese sauce, dried parsley, and fresh green onions. It's so good. I eat like a variation of this almost every day. Sometimes I change up the spices. Sometimes it's a lemon Greek style soil curl plus Add some peppers, onions, and olives. Sometimes it's a Chinese five spice style porky flavored kind of thing. I have not applied my vegan shawarma treatment to it yet, but I will soon and I bet it will be good. But for now, I will just enjoy this glorious buffalo mozzarella soy curl salad and address a couple of the comments. Well, uh, actually I got a lot of people saying that keto is straight up dangerous. True, it could probably be, especially for people who experience tendencies to treat food restrictions in a uh, unhealthy direction. Any kind of restrictive eating pattern can lead to more restrictive, more restriction in a very negative direction. A lot of people say that about veganism actually, and statistically is actually true. So proceed with caution, this is not a prescription. <laughs> like what I eat in a day videos are never what I'm telling you to eat. Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes like I, I make a really good thing and I'm like, you should try it. But you're supposed to take whatever I make, the idea of it, and then do whatever the heck you want with it for it to fit your life, your goals, your, ma your macros, or I don't know, I guess. Whatever you want to do, because there are no rules. Like, like I mentioned before, it is a tool. Tools are meant to be used in certain ways. Misusing a tool can be dangerous. Oops, I just dropped one on my foot. It's five second rule? No. <laughs> um, I also had some other comments that said keto is dangerous and the science says it's dangerous. And I was linked to or pointed to some papers, I should say, were mostly summaries. And I've read more than that, I guess, uh, in this kind of sphere of keto plant-based or, you know, effects of low carb, etc. cetera. Um, some of your comments touched on weight loss and how it's not effective for weight loss, short term, it's only water weight. Frankly, I don't care about weight loss. This is not what this channel is about. So I have nothing to say about that. One of the papers in particular brought up that keto diets show increased LDL, increased bad cholesterol, not enough fiber, not enough micronutrients that could be possibly associated with like poor health outcomes. You see how I'm doing it? Those studies don't seem to apply to plant-based keto. There are, I've looked for studies on plant-based keto, like. I, I'm not seeing any that focus on what I want to you know, use it for and for long term either. They're just not, I guess it's just like a too new of an approach. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just don't see the risk of it versus a meat based keto diet, right? Um, and my opinion on whether a meat based keto diet is dangerous or not. Leave me out of it, I have no interest. I'm just doing this so that whenever my pain, like my baseline pain seems to creep up or I get a major flare up, I put myself into ketosis. I use the low carb foods um, menu here, like this for example, live my happy life whilst I stay in ketosis and don't have 
any ill side effects that I can feel and be able to get back to work. Not to say I'm not going to pay attention to my health. I guess this comes across as kind of defensive when all I did was ask for your opinions and you just gave me your opinions. <laughs> But I do want to share that it, it just seems to me that plant-based keto is a lot different than like a meat-based keto. And my intentions are a lot different than like the prevailing idea of the only reason why you would do it. My approach to this whole thing too is not like I feel as restrictive as a lot of the content seems to make it seem like it needs to be. And I'll get more into my approach later. For now, I did have some comments. These are lighter comments. <laughs> um, some people are asking like, how do you make it taste good? How do you get variety? How do you get enough protein without supplements? Like, hey, I am okay with supplements actually. Uh, they're clearly fine to me. I don't feel like you need it. It's just like for convenience, right? Cooking every single meal from scratch isn't that convenient and it doesn't fit most people's lifestyles. But for me, um, it does. <laughs> it does. Now that I have like a lot of the use of my hands back. Remember back, back in the day when I, I complained about like being so sick of like Amy's soups and like Dea pizzas. I just couldn't stand it anymore because I had to use them because my hands just wouldn't let me cook. Now I can cook every single meal of the day and they're fine. Plus I can work. Like you can't, the, the, the amount of life changing this has been for me. Like everything, not just, not just this, but everything up until now, it has been such a turnaround that I am not going to get emotional about. Instead, let me demonstrate uh, with YouTube filmmaking magic. Dinner time. Allow me to demonstrate with my vegan fried rice. Rice being not rice, but when I make it this way, it's not so easy to tell. I mean, I can tell obviously, but I've served this and people tell me they couldn't tell until I told them. The first component to any good fried rice is leftovers. Leftover bits and bobs of vegetables and my pre-prepped bok choy. Leftover buffalo soy curls from this afternoon and fresh chopped green onions and cauliflower rice. Pine nuts because they are so fragrant and some vegan round that needs using up. Plus a bunch of seasonings. Don't worry if you don't have the exact same things. Substitutions are easy and encouraged as always. Also, don't worry about writing anything down because I'm going to have it in the description box for you along with the written recipe or a link to the printable version. So let's take it to the stove on medium heat down with a bit of olive oil and just a normal amount, a little less, a little more, it's not going to matter because you just need enough for this crushed garlic. The oil conducts heat so all the garlic can cook evenly and release the oil soluble flavors without burning. And this is why oil sauteing is superior to water sauteing. Fight me in the comments. Then when it's fragrant and just the tiniest golden, pour in the cauliflower rice. And uh, how you make cauliflower rice is literally just take some cauliflower, blitz it in a food processor until it's like ricey, and this is what you got. This may not look like a lot by the way, cause it's not, it's just dinner for one tonight because someone is out of town. Uh, so just double it if you're cooking for two. Or of course, you can do this exact same thing with leftover jasmine rice or a mixture of cauliflower rice and regular rice if you're not interested in keeping it low carb, but want to keep in the wonderful nutrients from cruciferous. You do you. Then a touch of five spice. Ginger powder, since I was out of fresh ginger, which you would have added with the fresh garlic if you had it. And one more thing I forgot uh, I had was shallots that needed to get that fry up treatment too. So whoopsies, I'm putting it in on the side. Might as well go in with the lighter green and white parts of our green onion as well. And uh, fruitlessly go after a big chunk of cauliflower that didn't get riced properly. You can probably tell by how it looks if it's cooked, but you should taste it just to see that it's cooked through. I find it's more ricey that way, totally cooked through, as opposed to crunchy par cooked cauliflower rice. I'm, not, I'm just not a fan of that. I'll add a touch of salt and my dusty onion powder. Some white pepper is absolutely essential. That is a rule. And of course, this is all to taste. So that's it for our rice for now. We will come back to it later. Now for the protein, no oil necessary for this step since the vegan ground beef I'm using doesn't tend to stick. There are so many kinds now. You can pretty much use whatever you like. 
And then the leftover soy curls from our salad this afternoon, seasoned with rice vinegar. Not the seasoned kind, just the plain rice vinegar. Soy sauce and a bit of sweetener. Again, my favorite kind, which will balance out the salty and sour flavors for a really mouthwatering Asian style taste. Add to that some ground Sichuan peppercorn, if you have it, some ginger powder, onion powder yet again, and our meat is done. Once more with olive oil, because just egg is quite famous for sticking. In with white pepper, and on to join its friends. Now let's get the leftover veggies just lightly cooked. Season with garlic powder. They really don't need a lot. I want them to keep their original flavor. And everything can go back in to mix and mingle. Our fried rice is really delicious at this point, but I wanna add pine nuts. They really are good as is. You don't have to toast them. However, since you're visiting today and you're my guest, I've got to make them a little bit special. I actually got this idea from visiting a Buddhist Chinese food restaurant in Vancouver called Bokong. And they have this pine nut and olive leaf fried rice. And when I had that, wow, if you're in Vancouver and get to try that out, it's so good. And so yeah, that I, this, I, this pine nut idea is from them. Lovely. <laughs> I picked that up from watching Heavenly Fan videos recently. Shout out to her. And also if you're a fan of Heavenly Fan, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. Last but not least, we're gonna cook up some garlic bok choy. First with a touch of olive oil again to make sure that garlic can get to its maximum aromatic power. And then the beautiful bok choy. I'm arranging them for maximum contact since a little char does enhance the flavor. A way to get that wok hay kind of flavor without actually getting wok hay. And a little water helps to steam it so it cooks faster. Final touch, a bit of soy sauce. Lid on for mm, half a minute or so, and it's done. Let's lay out the bok choy and garnish with dark green parts of green onion and toasted sesame seeds and some ground red chili flakes. And would you look at that? There is so much flavor packed in, a good amount of protein, healthy fat from the pine nuts, but it's not like we're going into extremes, except for extremely delicious, extremely satisfying, extremely colorful. It's mostly just normal cooking, but I switch out the traditional rice for cauliflower, which is packed with even more fiber and has its own special benefits too. It's like pretty much how I approach things when switching my regular way of eating to low carb. Just make some simple switches, small adaptations, keep it fun and delicious. Don't stress too much. Have some tea, maybe later, and relax. And a Brazil nut for that selenium. So I am going to start talking numbers soon, but spoiler alert, I haven't found that paying attention to numbers to be super important at all. One last thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this. If you are interested in trying out AG1, click my special link below and on your first purchase, you're gonna get five free travel packs and your year supply, up to a year supply of vitamin D3 drops. And with that, let's get into numbers. But first, a caveat if numbers concerning things like calories and macros are not a healthy thing for you to be watching or, or listening to me talk about, then Bye bye for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take the recipe ideas and do with it what you would like. For the rest of you, if you're interested, I think the most interesting thing about the numbers is that I don't stick to the strict keto macros. And what that means is like, if you go online and you're like, oh, what's the keto diet about? What are the macros for keto? It always says something to the effect of 70 to 80% of your calories from fat. But for me, a keto diet is just the diet that keeps me in ketosis. Either it helps me get there or it keeps me there. One thing that I will say is, uh, I think I mentioned it before that I do intermittent fasting and that actually will help you just because there's more time in between your meals and therefore during that time, you are burning up your glycogen. Say if you're going from like a regular state to the ketosis state, it's faster if you intermittent fast, I guess. But also it's faster if you kind of 
Well, I shouldn't say faster. I think for me, it's beneficial to go into it slowly. I kind of, once I, once I figured out this tool, I kind of kept it a little bit on the low carb side and I am mindful when I have dense carbohydrates. Like I know what the consequences are and so therefore I'll try to make sure my other meals have lots of non-starchy carbs instead of the starchier ones. So it kind of all balances out and I kind of stay on the lower side even if I'm not in ketosis so that when I feel like there's a flare up and I need to or I have a big editing job coming up and I just know the stress is also gonna like add to the possibility of a flare up, I'll keep it low carb say. So just that out of the way, I'll get into the numbers now, but like I said, my numbers, like my macros here, I'll go get into right away. Fat today is at 63%. Now mind you with chronometer, everything is actually kind of an estimate. I did weigh out my food uh, whenever I could beforehand. The olive oil, I think I maybe have gone a little bit over than what I have recorded. Um, but so generally, without actually trying to add additional fats, like I'm not trying to put in fat bombs here, I'm just kind of naturally eating what I eat and not worry about being low fat because I never actually worry about being low fat, but switching out the dense carbohydrates such as bread. And you know me, I usually, if I'm gonna eat bread, it's gonna be white bread. If, if, if it's gonna be pasta, it's gonna be like, you know, regular pasta, not some of the new fandangled pastas that are out right now. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with them. It's just not how I like to enjoy those dense carbohydrates. But in general, it's gonna be kind of like more refined foods uh, and white rice. I just, I went through a phase in my 20s where I actually did like brown rice and then I switched back to white rice and I could never go back. It's just not pleasant for me. I'd rather not have it. So it's white rice or no rice in my opinion. Uh, you do you, of course. This is not like a judgment or me trying to tell you what to do or anything like that. Also when me, with me sharing my numbers, I'm really not trying to tell you how to do, even if you're trying to go along with me, trying to go Tito or I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> I'm not telling you that this is what you should eat or this is how you should eat. It is just what I ate this one day and it's, and this kind of style is working for me for my tendonitis. It really has nothing to do with almost like 90% of you, but if you're curious, here they are. Also, protein, I have it in at 20% today. Uh, and, and then carbs are at 17%. So that is much higher, so this is net carbs, much higher than the prescribed like 10%, 5% that you'll see online. But I find that I still stay in ketosis. Now I test with um, pea strips, but I don't actually test anymore. Like I did that in the beginning when I was figuring out what does even ketosis feel like? Now that I know what it feels like, it's really obvious. I think for everyone, it is the symptoms are different. Some of the negative symptoms I have had a little bit of question, a few questions about is like, did you get bad breath or like fatigue or, you know, keto flu? That's never really happened for me. The only thing that I really noticed that like you could construe as sort of unpleasant is my hands and feet will get cold. It's not super cold and it's not something that I'm unfamiliar with anyways because growing up I was always famously cold hands, cold feet until I went vegan about 10 years ago and all of a sudden I always had very warm hands and feet. It was so strange to me. So when I started doing like low carb thing and had cooler hands and feet, I was thinking, oh, yeah, that makes sense because before I was vegan, I would eat not every two to three hours, like when I first went vegan and, and it was a whole like whole whole foods type of approach, even though I hadn't learned about the whole food plant-based movement yet. I would just be hungry all the time. And it wasn't a big deal because every two hours I had a snack. Like I would always have purse snacks. Uh, anyways, this is besides the point. I'm rambling, sorry. Um, if you were like, to the point, Mary. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, they are, these are not the prescribed macros but it works for me to stay in ketosis and it works for me for like my goals of what I wanna do. And uh, my calories are at a <laughs> 13 calorie surplus. But as you can remember, this is very, like this is just a guideline and, and it's not meant to uh, my, my maintenance and not your maintenance. Um, same as what is gonna keep you in ketosis or get you into ketosis is different from what, from me. And some people uh, apparently find it very, very hard to get into ketosis. And even when they do, they don't feel a benefit. They don't feel like clear headed. They don't feel with more energy. Um, so if that's not you, apparently there are genetic differences. Um, and it all comes down to like, I just actually read about this and it has to do with mitochondria, but I don't remember. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm not gonna say anything more about that since I don't really remember I didn't take notes. Thing. Okay, so let's get back down to micronutrients, which are like what people are more concerned about, I think. So vitamins, like this is including all the food, including my supplement for today, the HE1, plus the vitamin D3 and K. Did I put the drops in? Yes, I did, okay. Um, and so you can see that all of my vitamins that Chronometer has here are covered or more than. In terms of minerals, we're all covered. It, it's telling me I'm having too much salt, salt, but I don't think I added very much salt. And oh, here, the salt is coming from Frank's soy sauce, the Gardein. Yeah, you know what? No big deal. I'm not worried about it, to be honest. I'm not. I never worry about it. Iron, magnesium, no, phosphorus, potassium. I'm not actually worried about this. Chronometer doesn't actually take into account some of the nutrients from some of the foods. The data sets are not 100% complete. So I know actually that I do have enough magnesium for this day according to their recommended amount of magnesium. I'm pretty sure it's the same with the phosphorus and potassium. And then, so here, protein, I'm a little bit less than usual today. I didn't have any protein powder. Um, I didn't necessarily want to emphasize protein all that much. I actually only put in as much as either what I have in the fridge or what I care to eat. And so I think it all evens out the end and it kind of, the other thing is you can't really pay attention to all the micro, like the all the different amino acids here in terms of the accuracy, because again, Chronometer does not have a full complete data set for every single ingredient I had today. So this may be off. But if you did want to have it covered, you know, protein powder, why not? Um, they are usually formulated to be a whole complete source of protein and and all you need. Anyway, so that those are the numbers. I don't think they're that very, very interesting. The only really interesting thing, maybe, when you're talking about a plant-based diet, is you may have a little bit extra carbs. And I personally find that it's not a big deal. I watched recently, I think it was healthy, Health, healthy crazy cool oh no i am not actually sure of the username but they posted because like maybe a week of eating keto and they seem to be really concentrated on like the macros the prescribed macros of 10 percent carbs or i forget how many grams but anyways i don't think that is actually necessary i think it's you if you get your body into ketosis and you know what it feels like and you know what foods make up you know help you do that Go to where those, those foods, get enough protein, I suppose, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about packing in extra fat bombs. Don't worry about, oh no, this red pepper is gonna put me five grams over. Like, I don't think it really matters. And if you get kicked and well, I don't know about you, but if I get kicked out of ketosis for like a little bit, a day, if I am in a therapeutic mode and this is like, I'm doing it intentionally for a purpose, that I'm actually in pain and I really need to work the next day or something that I might take an extra walk. Too much exercise, however, gets me injured. So I just, I think it's connected to the tendonitis. It's just, it's one of those things. So anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was not as scary as I think some people had expected. Just based on the opinions and the comments that I got from when I announced that I'm gonna do this video, why in keto, I really didn't expect that so many people would be Ooh. <laughs> I did ask for your opinions and maybe some pe people were just spicy about it and um, just saying their own opinion for themselves, which is totally fine, totally cool. But like I did have somebody announce that they're unsubscribing and well, I mean, if this, honestly, if this kind of uh, uh, content is, you know, just unhealthy for you to watch at, at all, I'm happy for you to just like take care of yourself, right? I honestly, genuinely just wish everyone the best. <laughs> like, anyways, that's it, I guess. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for watching. Sorry, I'm so awkward on camera. I actually filmed this little segment afterwards because I just had too much on camera time. I couldn't handle it. And this is going to be tough to edit. I know I rambled on so much and it's going to take so long. <laughs> um, all right, I, ha I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to subscribe. It's totally up to you. There are no rules. And uh, give us a like for encouragement. <laughs> Bye for now.